I'm going to show you how to deal with data that's returned from a server in XML format. This is actually really common. Lots of web services are going to return XML versus raw text. It's actually more useful too, because within JavaScript you have ways of manipulating the XML before you display it. So I've got here our PHP backend, and all this does is produce an XML of some of my favorite bands and one of their songs. So you can see the structure is just loaded into a variable called output, and then the variable output is echoed. I have a couple of headers here. The first is an access control allow origin asterisk. And what that does is it allows URLs of any domain to receive this data. The second header says that this is content type text slash XML with the UTF-8 character set. This is important because the browser then recognizes it as an XML object when it's returned. So when we go to the actual site where this lives, this is what we get. Most browsers can render XML, and here you can see I can even kind of interact with it a little bit. Close all these band nodes like this, or I should say bands nodes, just like that. Also, it's a good idea to take note of the structure of the XML itself. The structure of this XML has a favorites as a root node, and then a bands repeating node, and then when Within each of repeating node is a band node and a song node, and inside those is data. So what we're going to have to do is dig through this to get at the data when this is returned to the server and display the data within the device. So this doesn't take any type of parameters. It returns the same thing every time. However, the basic idea is the same. All right, so let's go ahead. I've already partially formed our project. We are targeting Android this time. And we've got our Cordova script. I've here in my script created a global XML HTTP variable, an onload function which attaches the device ready listener to the document and calls init when we get the device ready event. In init, I've identified the button BTN get bands, which is down here. We've added a listener for that. That's going to listen for a click event. When it's clicked, it's going to call the get data function. So that leaves us right here inside the get data function. Now I'm actually going to take a step back and here in init, we've got to create the XML or I should say instantiate the XML HTTP request object. So XML HTTP equals new XML HTTP request. And then we can set the ready state here. XML HTTP dot on ready state change. That's the event. And our callback function this time, let's go ahead and call it uh, load data. All right, so now when we call get data, we can send our requests, so we'll need to use the open command first, so XML HTTP dot open. Three arguments here. First is the method or protocol. We're going to use get. Second is the URL, which I had already pasted or copied from the clipboard. And then whether we're doing this asynchronously or synchronously, let's do false resulting in a synchronous type of pattern which will really prevent the user from doing anything until they get this data. There could be consequences of that in a connected environment that's not so fast, for example, a 3G connection or something like that. All right, so we've got that set up. So now, XML HTTP dot send. That'll send the data and actually make the connection to the server. So we got everything set up. We've instantiated our XML HTTP request object. We've set up our on ready state change callback. We've initialized here by, actually, let's move this down now that I think about it. I want this in the init function. It probably would have worked there, but it's a better idea to wait to get the device ready um, event to occur. All right, so here in init now, we're instantiating the objects, the XML HTTP, and the on ready state change callback event. Here, we're just getting ready in the onload function, we're attaching init to device ready so init is called. All right, and then get data 
is called when our button is clicked right here. Okay, so now we have one function left to write, and that's going to be the core of this. That's going to be the load data function. Doesn't matter what order they're in, so we'll just put this here. And this is the function that's going to receive the content and parse the XML. So first we've got to check the ready state and make sure it's four and the status. And make sure it's 200. If that's the case, what we're going to do is we're going to take what comes back and load it into our own object. So we'll call that band XML. Of course, that's just a name I made up. And we'll get in there, XML HTTP dot response. Now, notice there's a response XML property, and that's the one we want this time because we're getting XML back. And then we're going to get the document element, which is the root node, which is favorites in this case. Get elements by tag name bands. So real quickly here, I'm going to pull up the XML one more time. And notice bands, with the plural, is our repeating element. So essentially what we're going to have in here is an array with these elements in it. So we have all of the bands elements in an array in this bands XML variable. We got there by getting the XML HTTP response XML, going to the document element, so that put us here at favorites. That's the document element or the root node. And then using get elements by tag name bands. So now we've got the bands XML. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little HTML table to output this information. It's tabular, so I don't think I'm cheating. And we'll create a line object that includes a table row. Oops, I got a little ahead of myself here. We're going to create an output object that will initially just put the opening table tag in. Make sure we spell output correctly. Now we're going to create a loop to loop through all of those elements. So we'll set i to 0, and I should do this var i to 0. i is less than bands xml dot length. That'll return the number of nodes, I++. Plus plus. So we don't necessarily have to be able to predict how many elements there are. We can use the length property. Now we're going to create our line. Our line will start with a table row tag. And then we're going to get the band element. Now that's getting the element itself. And the way we'll get the band element is getting from the bands XML sub i. So the first time we're on the zeroth, then we're on the first, then we're on the second. And then we're going to use get elements by tag name. And this time we're looking for not bands, but the inner element, which is bands. It's a good idea to keep your XML open for reference as you do this. So we're getting not bands, but band. Now here's where most people screw up. That gets the element. That gets the opening tag, the closing tag, and the data inside it. We want the text. So the way we get the text, or the band name, is by going inside the band element. And here we're going to do a sub zero, get the first child, which is the text, and the node value. All right, so now this has in it the actual text value. We can repeat this process for the song element. So we'll get the song element. And then we can use bands, XML, sub i. This time, get elements by tag name. Now remember, get elements by tag name returns an array not a single value. 
which is why when we get the song name, we have to say song elements sub zero. We know it's only going to return one, but this is the zeroth element. So now we get the correct node value. So with this information, we can now construct our line. So we'll concatenate to the line variable a table data tag. Then the value of band name plus a closing table data element like that. Oops, that needs to be quoted, of course. Then we'll do another line for the song name. So we'll have a table data tag plus the song name plus a closing table data tag. Now we need to complete the line. So we'll concatenate the closing table row tag to conclude the whole line of HTML that we're building. And then I'm going to add this to the output. Remember, we started the output up here with table. So after we go through that whole loop, we're going to need to close the table output with a closing table tag, just like that. So this will display our data in a nice table. So finally, I'm going to go ahead and access the element down here in the UI, result. And that's where I'm going to put the actual content that's returned. So we took that XML, we parsed it, and then we made a table out of the data inside it, put it in a variable called output, and now we're putting that output inside the inner HTML property of the result div. So that looks like just about everything. I think we can go ahead and save and give this a try in the actual environment. Let's go ahead here and load up Eclipse. Maybe get one of our uh, virtual devices going here. Just click Start. Should have remembered to do that at the beginning because these devices, especially on slower machines, can take quite a long time to load. You have to remember you're layering on top of your existing operating system an actual Android emulator, an actual Android device. All right, so looks like that's getting started. We can close this and let's actually bring in our application and make the changes we need to make to make it run. I'm going to go ahead and click File, New, Projects. We're bringing in an Android project from existing code. We'll find the root directory, which I keep on my desktop for the purposes of being quick here as we do this class. And let's see, Web Service XML, there it is. Looks like it's going to take it and load it into the environment. Now remember, once it loads it into the environment, commonly we're going to get an error once it fully builds out, and we can correct that error ourselves in the Android environment. So we'll give it a minute to find that error, and then we'll go ahead and correct it. And now you can see the error appeared there next to the manifest and here in the Problems tab. So we're going to go ahead and on our project, we're going to control click or right click if you're on a PC and go ahead and choose properties down there at the bottom. Android, choose your most recent version. Let's click OK. And once this completes right here, we can choose project and clean. When I click OK, in just a moment, the errors will disappear because everything is now congruent. All right, good to go. So now I'm going to go ahead and load our project into our debugger. So there's our debug configuration, doing an Android application. And looks like it's launching. And we'll give it just a minute for it to come up in our emulator. And there's our device. There's our Get Bands button. Let's go ahead and click. There we go. And there we've got our list of bands parsed from the...